I, I was asked to speak because I've been very involved, not only as a farmer, but as somebody trying to advance the value add industry in Canada. Uh, there's a saying that everything we have has either been grown or mined. And if you look around your room, you look at what you're wearing, you look at your dishes, you look at your house that's been built, uh, you see just how, how true that is. So as somebody who is actually on the very beginning of that chain where I'm growing food that you are either eating directly or it's going into your food or it's feeding your food, um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of the chain. Growing food for Canada and for the world uh, is something that all farmers take pride in. Now, personally, I think Canada uh, has for way too long grown food and shipped it all in its raw for firm form to far too many countries. Uh, rather than taking what we grow, whether it's the peas or the wheat or the canola and processing it here and shipping finished products, we tend to put a whole lot into rail cars and send it to the port to go into ships to go to other countries. So a big part of what I wanna to talk to you about is the benefit of keeping it here in Canada, doing a lot of the secondary and tertiary processing and adding all of the jobs to the Canadian economy and all of the GDP to the Canadian economy. And because I know your organization is very much about what kind of jobs are there in the future for students? How can they contribute? Um, this, this is what I'm all about also. I know you've all heard about plant protein. You'd have to live under a rock not to have heard about maybe a Beyond Meat bar burger or a Ripple milk, something like that. But I wanted to give you some of the reasons why plant protein has exploded, particularly in the last five years. Um, if you knew somebody who was vegan or vegetarian 20 years ago, they were a little bit of an odd duck, whereas today people eating vegetarian is just one more choice, right? Uh, one of the reasons is our growing world population. There's just more people. They need more food and they need good food. And as the middle class grows, they're not only demanding um, more food, they're demanding more protein because that's, that's really the, uh, the food that we desire the most, right? Now, that protein, it's going to come in the form of beef, chicken, sheep, goat, uh, fish, dairy, but it's also going to come in peas, beans, lentils, chickpeas, wheat, uh, canola, flax, hemp, oats, and many other things we grow. It's going to come from insects. So there is a demand for protein, and here in Canada where we grow and raise everything, we can meet those demands. The other reason plant protein has really grown is that people aren't just eating meat, potatoes, peas, and corn anymore. Now it's like, we're having Taco Tuesday, we're going out for Thai on Thursday night, and hey, let's go have falafels on Friday. And maybe we'll, we'll go for a French cuisine on Sunday and then Korean on Monday. We, we tend to eat around the world. And as we eat around the world, we find out that in a lot of places in the world, plants in their diet are being used in amazing ways. Anybody that's had a, a Israeli falafel or perhaps enjoys hummus or has been enjoying uh, some Lebanese food, maybe something Turkish, you'll find out there's a lot more plants in it. The other thing is, as we continue to feed animals, uh, some, some people say their dogs and cats eat better than they do, uh, there's a lot of plants going into that food as well as into uh, the fish food for aquaculture to raise a lot of our farm, farm raised trout, tilapia, salmon, whatever it is. And of course, uh, our plants go into feeding livestock. Here in Alberta, the reason our beef is so good is it's barley fed. And uh, we, we brag about barley fed beef over corn fed beef. So there's, there's a lot of other uses for plants. I think most of your students will understand the demand for sustainability, especially when right now uh, the UN food forums are taking place. People are looking not just for food that's good and healthy, but food that has a bit of a lower 
carbon footprint and is better for the environment. And in a lot of cases, when you're talking about the good growing land, uh, the crops have a far better sustainability profile. They use less water, uh, they use less resources to raise them. Now, if we're talking about grazing land where very little else can be grown, and there's lots of that across Canada, then livestock is the most sustainable. So you can't necessarily say, this is the sustainable food. You have to look at, at the area you're growing in. But this is the reason why plant protein is growing around the world. Uh, there's a lot of great uses for it, and the world needs more food. Some of you will love numbers, and so I gave you some numbers. I have to admit, uh, 28 million means nothing to me. But I can say we have a tremendous amount of growing potential on the prairies. And a lot of that growing potential is going into crops that can be used for plant protein. So I'll get into that more as you go forward. Pulses are peas, beans, lentils, and chickpeas. And they are as old as civilization is. The word actually comes from a Latin word meaning soup or, or pottage, pulse. Uh, here in Canada, we are not the largest grower of pulses. India gets that, but India is also the largest consumer of pulses. So they're still a net importer. Canada is the largest exporter of pulses in the world. And we all recognize that they are one of the healthiest foods we grow in addition to being the most sustainable crop that we grow. Now for your students to know, if you wanna get into agriculture, great. I'd love to point you to places like research. Uh, we need new varieties, we need improved varieties, we need improved agronomics. Um, but we also need people that are involved in the fractionation plants. We need people that are out there finding new ways of making foods using what we grow. So whether you're interested in research, marketing, uh, development, uh, uh, processing, science, engineering, there's a place for you in all of this. Uh, canola is a very big crop for Canada. We're the number one producing and exporting nation in the world. And currently, a lot of our canola is being crushed to make the oil that you see in the stores. Uh, it's also used for a number of other purposes. And the meal, a lot of it is sold to dairy cattle. If we change the process just a little bit, which they're working on, that meal is high protein and it can go into human food also, as opposed to just going to dairy cows. Um, ironically, the dairy industry has found that if you feed your dairy cattle canola meal, they produce more milk. So there's always these synergies that we find about. Uh, there is great opportunity for research into better crush methods, better processing methods, new products using that canola protein or the canola oil. One of the other crops that we grow, quite a lot of you can go ahead, uh, is wheat. Uh, we used to say that Canada was the breadbasket of the world. We grow wheat that goes into your bread. We grow the kind of wheat that goes into your pasta. We grow a kind of wheat that goes into the uh, noodles that Southeast Asia is so fond of. There's, there's a lot of different kinds of wheat and a lot of different kinds of uses of them. And there is a lot of opportunity in research to, to hone the varieties to the uses and also to be looking at, you know, maybe we can be using them a little bit different. We all know about making flour but maybe there are other ways to use our wheat that we haven't thought about. There's always um, opportunity for research and development. Go ahead. Some of the other protein crops, and this is not an exhaustive lip, list. I think you know about hemp. Uh, we harvest it for the protein in the seed. We harvest it for the fiber in the straw, and we har harvest some of it uh, more into the um, not the hemp, but the marijuana side so much for the CBD. But hemp itself as an agricultural crop uh, can be used in so many different ways. It's quite amazing. Quinoa, I think you've probably all had a quinoa salad. It's a high protein, not nearly as high as pulses, but it's another protein. Uh, flax, oats, barley, uh, camelina, 
we, we grow so many products here on the prairies. And again, there's opportunities for uh, research and development into how can we use our Canadian oats better? What can we do with our flax that we're not doing now? So be thinking about that if you're somebody that just loves the challenge. Go ahead. I wanna go back to pulses. Uh, we brag about them a lot, but there's a reason for it. Uh, and number one is that we're growing a lot of them. So when something's grown in Canada, you know it was grown with Canadian HACCP principles, with Canadian water, with Canadian air. Uh, personally, I want to eat food grown with our environment compared to food that's been grown in some of the env other environments in the world. But add to that, it's extremely high in protein. Uh, we grow one bean that's very close to 30% protein. Our peas are 20%. You know, and, and the lentils and chickpeas are high also. They're high in fiber, both soluble and insoluble, which is super important in our diets today. Low in fat, which everybody seems to think about. And a lot of nutrients, uh, trace nutrients that are important. They are the top of the diabetic's low glycemic index, mostly because of the soluble and insoluble protein that they're very good for a diabetic diet. Um, they're shelf stable to the max. You could put a pail of beans down in your cold room and bring it up 10 years from now and cook them. They'd be exactly the same. They might have to cook 10 minutes longer, but that would be it. And we can't say that about all our foods, can we? Um, and affordable. I don't know if you can buy a lot of healthy food cheaper than you can go and buy a bag of peas, split peas or beans or lentils. Um, legumes have a really low carbon footprint too. In fact, the Canadian or the, the Alberta yellow pea has got the best LCA out there. They also have a really low water footprint. Uh, we, we joke that with lentils, they need water twice in their life, once when you plant them and once when you cook them. It's, it's a little bit of a joke, but it is amazing how little water in a growing season you can use for them. And that's a real benefit in some of our dry areas on the prairies. Legumes improve soil health. It's, it's an interesting uh, scientific concept that they actually put healthy bacteria into the soil that improve the health of the soil after you've planted them. Plus they make their own um, nitrogen, a, a legume, has nodules in its roots that make nitrogen, not only for their plant, but that are then left for the next year's plants. Uh, there is nothing else that does that. And it's becoming increasingly important in a world that wants us to reduce our, our fertilizer input. Uh, pulses in a rotation allow us to do that. They improve the crop rotations because of that. Wheat grown on a pulse crop will do better than wheat grown after another crop because of the nitrogen that's been left and the um, bacteria in the soil. So they're, they're pretty amazing little plant. This is what we grow in Canada. Uh, there are more beans than I could list in the 45 minutes today. There's a variety suited to every growing area in the world. We grow um, about 10 or 12 varieties in Canada. We ship them all over the world. We grow more lentils than uh, any other country. Uh, the yellow peas over on your far left and green peas and a few other varieties we grow, we either ship them or we uh, split them for our market or more and more we're fractionating, which I will talk about. As I mentioned before, we're not the biggest growers of pulses in the world, but we are by far the biggest exporters. And we're sending uh, our pulses in Canada to over 150 countries in the world. Uh, I would like to see the day come where instead of exporting all of these whole pulses, we're exporting a whole lot more finished product. It would be better for Canada's GDP. It would provide more jobs and it would add to our economy in so many ways. But we're a powerhouse. Go ahead. Unfortunately, this is a a graph that stops at 2018 because that straight line there would have just started curving straight up. It has been amazing, the product launches in the last number of years. Uh, 
back in you know 2010, if you wanted to find a product that had pulses in it of any kind, you might have gone to the cereal aisle and found something that had lentils in it or or flake beans maybe. Today, there's no limit to the aisles you can go to that have some form of pulses in them. And it's going to be more and more as people do the development because A, the world is asking for it. They're asking for the health and they're asking for, in many cases, a vegetarian or vegan alternative. It's also a little bit more cost effective. We all know the price of some of our meat products today, whereas uh, it's still cheaper to put lentils and beans and peas into something. So, go ahead. This gives you an idea of what you can do with some of the pulses besides cooking them and eating them. So if you look on the left, all of those can be cooked straight from the field. Give them a rinse, throw them in water, they can be cooked and eaten. Uh, the peas, chickpeas, lentils can all be split. And it's a really common way, whether you're eating chana masala or, or you've got some red lentils you're throwing into soup, you're making split pea soup, that's a common way to eat them. But the fractionation is where things are really taking off in Canada. When you fractionate something like peas, you are actually um, putting the pea through a process that blows it apart into the particles that are pure protein, the particles that are pure starch, and the fiber, which is predominantly the outside um, husk of, of the pea, but it's also a little bit of, of the inside. You blow those apart and you have completely different uses. For example, starch can be used like you would use cornstarch or anything else in thickening, in coating, uh, even in plastics. The fiber is often going into a lot of your uh, pet foods where you want more fiber or your um, your weight loss products where they're, they're giving you um, a morning drink with more fiber. A lot of different uses for it. Coating the protein is the one that's really been valuable to the food industry because they all want to up the protein in food. And by adding some of this reformulating with protein, you increase your protein content in food and still maintain a very clean label. I know, like I said, that you all know about uh, Ripple Milk and uh, Beyond Meat Burgers, but have you seen the bakery aisles? Um, have you walked down the gummies and seen how many have pea starch in them? Have you picked up a bag of popped chickpeas or uh, perhaps roasted faba beans, uh, granola bars that are super high protein, often have put something from a pulse into them. And I think if you go check out your favorite dog food that uh, is really a premium one in terms of health, uh, it's probably got some pulse products in it. There's just uh, no, no lack. One of the reasons fractionation first start, got started is uh, the Chinese discovered that vermicelli noodles could be made a whole lot cheaper and every bit as good if they use pea starch instead of mung bean starch. And so they started fractionating the peas in order to get the starch for their vermicelli noodles. It's not Canadian. And just in case you wondered, this isn't just Canada. This gives you an idea of some of the different products around the world. This, this screen could have a thousand, 10,000 products on it. But I thought I'd give you a little bit of an idea. You, you look at the sausages in front of you in the UK um, or perhaps the salmon cakes coming out of New Zealand. Uh, there are so many uses for putting a plant protein into food. And in many cases, you're limited by your imagination. And what we really need is students in the food processing industry with imagination. How can I do this? How can I reformulate a product to use Canadian grown food and increase the nutrition in the product, maybe decrease the cost. You'll be a very popular researcher if you can set your brain onto the out of the box things that you can do with them. Plant protein um, trend that really needs the brains is finding more usage for starch and fiber. Right now, our protein is sold five years out around the world. Anything we produce, there's a market for. But Starch, 
we, we produce probably twice, if not three times the starch every time we fractionate a pea. And so the value of it is not as high. If we can find more and better uses for starch, you will find that um, then the fractionation process is then more valuable. Uh, some of you out there are going to be engineers, technologists, and you're wondering when I talk about fractionation, what I do mean. Uh, if anybody wants a more detailed plan of how it works, there's there's quite a number available. But basically, you're you're putting it through a process that first dehulls it, takes that hull off the outside, and then mills it apart with a very fine mill, and then using a, an air classification system or another one, it separates everything. And having all those pieces separated means that you can use each individual portion for something. Um, is this better than whole peas? Uh, no, it's, it's another use. And the more we find more uses, the more we can do processing in Canada. Maybe we can have a plant that's making the pea milk or another one that's making the granola bars or another one that's making the textured meat product that's not meat. We have all of those right now. I know of them in Alberta and I know them across Canada. And I think we could have a lot more. It is uh, far more equitable to be shipping finished product than to ship bulk product. It just makes more sense transportation wise. And a lot of people in the world are looking to buy product that has been made in a country like Canada, where they can trust our safety, they can trust our food handling, they trust our water, they trust our environment. We have so many opportunities. Uh, maybe you're in the executive uh, branch, you're going into business administration. These businesses need the CEOs and the CTOs and you, know, you won't start there, but you can work up to there, right? Maybe you're an engineer. I, I think you'd find them fascinating, what they are discovering constantly, and there's a lot of research going into it. Maybe you're, you're going into the food industry. Uh, here's some opportunities for you. Some of the advantages Canada has over other countries are in research, production, processing, and international reputation. Um, we have a huge capacity. You know what your universities have. Um, we are connected around the world. And people are looking to Canada because they can do research on product and go out to the field that's an hour from the university and, and do hands-on research. It's very important. So we have the whole value chain. Um, investment. If, if you as a student are, in, are someone who really knows how to bring investment into companies, most of the companies I know are always limited more by, we just need more money to do this. And really, we have a tremendous advantage because of all the reasons I gave earlier. So whether you're going into STEM, whether you're going into to the marketing, to whatever it is, uh, we have a lot of opportunities for people going into processing. And we have a reputation that is really quite amazing. People trust Canadian things. All of my slides are pre-COVID, and I know COVID messed with all of the statistics, but Canada is still very much trusted for our reputation because of our, our safety and our standards. And that takes you to our, our international reputation. So it's a good place to live. It's a good place to work. It's a good place to invest. And you need to remember that as you're looking for jobs. So I wanted to give you just a few ideas before I stop. The picture on your right is uh, a fractionation plant in Saskatchewan. It's what's happening in the green building that's really uh, the interesting thing. But these are just a few of the jobs that are being created by value-added processing right now. And honestly, I just started. So whether you're in the trade, whether you are in, in the uh, in more of the administration and marketing, or whether you're in STEM, there's a place for you, and we need you in the plant protein industry.